Hello everyone again and welcome to the DMSI YouTube channel and it's truly a pleasure to actually have you all in this particular space and in this particular video here speaking of space we're talking about different types of particles in a specific tube usually called the collision tube and we expected from our previous videos to determine not only what the specific variables are in terms of the z but also looking at lambda and what are all these variables what do they represent we know that z is determined to be called the collision frequency and the collision frequency actually tells us the number of hits of particles when a particular particle is going across at a specific time interval and on the other side here we have the lambda which is called the mean free path which actually tells us the distance it takes for one particle to collide with another particle in a specific tube so in this particular video here looking at a specific tube in this case i just draw the tube and this tube here will have various forms of molecules and these molecules will be traveling in this direction and what is going to happen is they actually collide in a particular surface on this particular surface and you're asked in here this surface considering the area of this surface how are you going to be able to determine the collisions with the walls or the surface and what is the terminology of that particular term where number of particles are hitting on a specific area at a specific time this is actually led to a specific concept which tells us the rate at which gases particles actually hit area and the surface of the wall this actually is expressed as the variable a big letter z with w huge one huge z with w subscript this actually tells us that we are considering the number of collisions with you know area at a specific time divided by the area of the surface that the particles are hitting out at a specific interval duration so therefore since we know our zw to be in terms of the number of collisions divided by our area multiplied by the time it takes for this process to occur we're going to look at how to derive a, an expression and one but also two how this particular expression connects really well to z which is what we have right here and the connection between the collision which is in this case called the collision flux which is zw collision flux the connection between it and our collision frequency is that the collision frequency can be determined actually by multiplying the collision flux by the area so since we have this idea taken into consideration we are going to prove this particular expression for our collision flux which everyone knows is equal to the pressure all divided by the square root of 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by the mass of the particles and next is the Boltzmann's constant multiplied by the temperature so we our goal is to be able to derive this particular formula and to derive this formula we need to look at various terminologies and conditions to apply in our for way to accomplish this particular goal so starting off with this we know first that hey let's create a system and uh, from our system we'll be able to analyze every single detail about this system first is when you have a system and in here we have an area which is a surface that you want your particles to hit we're going to represent this as a and a is aligned on the y-axis and it is perpendicular to 
our x axis so therefore when particles in this case is moving in the x direction towards the wall we can actually assign the vector to be represented as vx running on the x-axis positive region and vx is definitely greater than zero so since vx is greater than zero we need to take another variable into consideration which is in this case the time it takes starting from t0 to t hit when this particular particle hits the wall so this time interval which is represented as change in t is linked now to the distance so the distance also it takes for this same particle to hit the wall is showing the relationship between the velocity and the time therefore our distance represented as d at x is equal to the velocity multiplied by our change in time now take note here that this is in this case when considering a space where this particle is in we're going to represent this space as a little you know cuboid and this cuboid system like system or space that contains this particle will not only have this particle in it but also other particles alike and all these particles as you mean they're all moving in the same or a range of velocities but most importantly they are all in the same direction heading towards the wall we can now take another or add another variable in here which is the number of particles or the number density with respect to the volume so therefore in this particular case we are going to look at all molecules with the velocity v and looking at that all molecules with this particular velocity which is positive in our volume which is represented v we are going to express this as the area multiplied by the height therefore in this part to break this down since we know that the area is a rectangle we know the area of a rectangle is less than width which is where these particles are going to hit and the height we know is represented as the change in time multiplied by the velocity by which that one particle is moving and we have the area and this is equal to the volume that means when we transform this into the number of collisions which is the total number of collisions we can now express this getting close to r z which is how you are going to relate your number of collisions to a specific time so the total collisions we know is expressed as now showing the relationship between the volume and the weird n and this n actually represents the number density so therefore the number of collisions is going to be expressed as the following number of collisions collisions is equal to we know our number density to be multiplied now by the volume we know that the volume is area multiplied by the time and that of the velocity so therefore uh, time multiplied by our velocity indeed is a great representation of the number of collisions so take note here that for the total number of collisions we need to now express our expression in this case take note i forgot my a <laughs> you need to take note that the expression has to be taking our velocity into consideration and the velocity in this particular space actually shows a range of velocities 
in terms of the magnitude. Some of them have low magnitudes, some of them have high magnitudes, and all this leads to the probability velocity distribution in this particular case right here. So taking that into consideration, we're going to introduce the integration part of our expression in this particular case. So our number of collisions is now going to include the integration using the number of particles at a range of velocities from zero to infinity and take note that in this case our number density our area and our time is the constant or are the constants while our integration which goes from zero to infinity is going to be applied to our velocity multiplied by the fr fraction or the number of particles at a range of velocities that we're going to talk about and this is going to be with versus to dx so since we have this taken care of we know that we need to rearrange the constant in a way that we are going to determine or arrive at specifically the collision flux which is now our collisions per area and time which is what we have right here so what we see right here is actually our a divided with our time both sides and so therefore dividing both sides by our area and our specific time in this case will result in the number of collisions per area per time interval once this cancels out we are going to have this here in this case this in terms of our collision flux which is part of our main goal zw and zw will be equal to our number density this is going to be multiplied by our integration which is expressed as vx multiplied by f at vx all multiplied now by this other integration right there so all these are inside the integration and therefore we need to now consider some of the things that we know from our previous videos and bring them back in here so what is one question our f at vx we know that based on our previous videos we said that our f at vx is expressed as the following in this term here we know that it is m over 2 pi uh, Boltzmann constant multiplied by temperature all this to the power of a half and this is multiplied by our e to the power of negative m v x squared over 2 r well sorry not r this time but k t so once we have this expression for the fraction of velocity distribution this will now be taking into consideration our constant which we're going to put aside or outside of the integration otherwise it's going to get complicated and messy while doing that so as a result of that our expression for the collision flux is now in terms of the number density multiplied by our specific constant m over 2 pi r uh, k t all square root and we have our other integration that we're going to then evaluate in this particular part right here so in this case we have our integration zero to infinity and we have our vx and this is going to be multiplied by e to the power of m v x squared all over 2 k t and this take note now is expressed as d at v x so we're not dealing with x here anymore we're dealing with v x so therefore 
in this part we are going to introduce our integration law which is expressed as the following we know that integration from infinity from zero to infinity where x squared is multiplied by in this case e to the power of negative a x squared d at x is equal to 1 over 2a where a based on our equation right here is this cutout right here so therefore we are expressing a now in terms of the mass over 2kt and so putting this into this equation we are going to determine our new expression which is now in terms of our m k and t therefore our k t over m is determined to be our specific integration now and this integration will now be shown as this therefore we are going to put ktm in here and we are going to move ahead and go from there so take note here that in this part once you have this introduced we have our new expression which is going to be written again as z for the collision flux multiplied by our number which is in this case equal to the number density multiplied by in this part we are going to expand our or distribute our half power or exponent power sorry over to root 2 root pi root k and root t and so on the other part here we have this to be now k t over m so therefore in this part we would then evaluate our powers and what we see is that our collision flux is equal to the number density multiplied by now in this part we have our m half over m in this case our m will be at the bottom and so we have this to be in the denominator our pi remains at the denominator Take note that they are all to the power of a half. We have our two, which is a constant. It's also a half in terms of the power. And then at the top, we have our k, which is to the power of half and temperature to the power of half. So this is also expressed as the number density is equal to all square root of kt which is a Boltzmann constant times temperature divided by 2 pi m and this is also the power of a half all square root so in this part here once we have this expression for our collision flux we can reduce this further by making a condition that hey how are we going to represent this particular segment of our expression in terms of one of the speeds is it going to relate really well to the relative speeds or will it relate really well to the mean speed or the most probable speed or the various forms of speeds that we talked about so this actually comes from what we know from our speed which is in this case the mean speed to be equal to square root of 8 take note that this is multiplied by kt over pi multiplied by the mass so in this case since we have this once you rearrange it we can actually determine that this is equal to half of our mean speed so therefore we are now going to be able to express our z in terms of our mean speed and our number density where our number density is multiplied by a quarter of the mean speed and so 
Another thing to keep in mind is the following. We know that the number density, where the number density, change the color. We know that the number density is equal to the number of mole multiplied by the various terms, which is in this case, the number of particles divided by the volume. And we also know that this is equal to the pressure over the Boltzmann constant multiplied by the temperature. So therefore, not only are you putting this particular segment in our particular called in our particular collision flux, but also you're putting this as well in the collision flux right here. So therefore, putting these two in this particular equation, we'll be able to get our new expression that is correlated with our specific general equation that we are asked to derive, which is the following. First step is once you put both of them, you're going to have this particular, let me draw the, drag this down. You're going to have first, we have one over four multiplied by our pressure over our Boltzmann constant times temperature. And this, in this case, was going to be expressed as square root of eight is the same thing as two square root of two and then multiplied by our Boltzmann constant power of two temperature to the power of two all divided by r pi to the power of half sorry not two and multiplied by the mass to the power of half and therefore once you have this taken care of we are going to cancel out this and that and we are left with two here we know that this two is the same thing at the bottom this two right here is the same thing as square root of four so we're going to keep our constants on one side square root of two over square root of four and then we have our other variables where p remains at the numerator and the denominator everything else will fall in place because here we have uh, k to the power of half at the top and k to the power of one at the bottom therefore evaluating the specific powers we actually have our k to be to the power of a half negative half which falls at the bottom and so the next one as well is applied to everything else that we have we have our pi and a half we have our mass and half and finally our temperature actually has the same evaluation process as our Boltzmann constant therefore we have our temperature as well to be to the power of half therefore since we know that to the power of four to the power oh sorry square root of four is the same thing as square root to uh, square root of two times square root of two therefore by breaking that down we're able to cancel out our two or square root of twos and as a result we have our expression for p to be all square root of k pi m t which is temperature and then the denominator when you combine the two square roots together what we're left now with our with our final answer is the pressure is all divided by the following we have square root of all two pi m which is the mass the Boltzmann constant and the temperature so that is how you're able to derive this particular equation by not only combining what we know from our specific collision frequency that we derived on our previous videos which is we at the top but then applying it to what we know concerning when particles collide at a specific area at a specific time and when you have that taken into consideration in terms of the velocity and the time which gives us the distance and distance is known to be the specific height in this part 
we're then able to analyze by creating the velocity of the velocity reach into the number of collisions which introduces a number density and then we're able to look at the number of collisions which is number of hits at an area at a specific time which then brings our velocities to be in this case an integration where we have to look at the specific velocity distribution and so therefore that leads us to various of our known mathematical skills that we are going to apply into our integration and then we're able to use our gas laws and also our mean speed to arrive at finally our expression for the collision flux so therefore this collision flux is going to be important on our next video when we're going to be able to determine the rate of effusion in terms of gas movement so that's about it for this particular long video i hope you found this really informative hit the comment down below let me hear your thought about this by that way i can talk to you all soon stay smart as always and believe yourselves